Hello everybody here in YouTube land. Sicilian Prince here. And what we're doing is I have my Riesling that is coming out of secondary. And I wanted to show you that the fermentation is complete. Now if we look at the... Try to get a better focus on that. We are way, way down in fermentation, all the way down. Uh, 0.99 something very very low so that's exactly what I was looking to achieve uh, complete fermentation but you could also see how the wine is kind of cleared on its own you can see the sediment at the bottom it's easier to see that in the white um, yeah so very nice and clear it's a better shot of the clarity on in the beaker. Or test vial, whatever they call it. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be racking from here into that carboy that I've cleansed and sanitized. Alright, so I'm going to set up the camera so it's not jumping around and we'll get started. Hey, if you guys can only see this, it's really, really funny. I got a iPad that is balancing on top of a crock pot <laughs> shooting this video. I'm going to carefully put this straight down to the back corner. not to disturb the sediment so much. Don't let it go. That's it. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get something. I had this oven mitt. I put it under the back side. I mean, under the front side so that it tilts back a bit. Help me to get more wine. More wine is always better out of that carboy. Get one more, maybe. So you can see the bottom, the bottom one is filling up. A couple of pieces of advice I could give you here is sometimes it's hard to get the tube on the top of the auto siphon. What I do is I run the tube under some hot water. and it slides over the top better. So we haven't even done the degassing. We haven't even done any of uh, clarifying and it's come pretty clear to begin with. That's a very good sign. So it's only going to get better from here. Um, we're going to let that complete. Should be very soon. Getting down to the bottom. Well, the nice thing about the white is you really can't see as much in the red the sediment and how it gets to the bottom. And uh, the white makes it much more apparent. Most of the time I make red, so... Um, here I am. 
here I am making my first Riesling. Wow. And we are complete. The wine that is left over in here is not really worth saving. So I'm going to be dumping that out uh, into the sink and washing out this carboy. I always clean and sanitize them after I'm done as well. Not only before I get started, but after as well. Make sure that everything stays nice and clean. The next step that we're going to do is put in the stabilizer, or the, uh, the sulfite into that carboy and then use the uh, mix stir drill attached device to st stir out all the bubbles from the uh, the yeast made okay we'll be right back alright so I got my stabilizer which is metabisulfite my trusty drill and my mixer that I put in the carboy, which I'm going to start a gas out with in just a bit. Alright, so I'm going to get set up and with the camera so you can see this better. I'll be right back. Alright, so all I do at this point is I take my sulfite and I add it to the carboy. There it goes. Quickly put my drill on there. careful with this because you don't want the wine to explode out of there. And you don't know how much gas is in the wine until you start doing this. And you can see the bubbles coming up to the top. So I'm going to keep doing this. What we're doing is we're releasing the carbon from the wine, the carbon, CO2, uh, the bubbles. You know, a lot like how if you wanted to stir some Coca-Cola flat, you would, you know, stir it like crazy and stir out all the bubbles. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here with wine. Alright, so we're going to be doing this for about a half hour. I'm not going to bore you with that, but um, that's what I'm going to be doing here. The next part of this video, we'll be putting in the clearing um, stuff. Now, I don't use the clearing stuff that comes with the kit because it's made from shellfish. I use something different. We'll go into that in just a little bit. Alright, this is what comes with the kit. Kikasol and Kytosan. The way that you would do this is you would put the Kikosol in first, stir it around for a little bit, and then you would put the Kytosan in and stir it around for a little bit. Um, that's how this clearing agent works. The Kikosol attracts and sticks to the uh, 
sediment or particles in the, in the wine that's suspended in the wine. The kikus all sticks to those, and then the kitesan sticks to the kikus all and those particles, and weighs everything down to the bottom. But this is a shellfish derivative, and if you're allergic to shellfish, you might not want to put this in your wine. So instead, I use sparkle oil. Um, the way that that works is you get some boiling water and you dissolve a tablespoon in the boiling water, stir it around real good, and um, let it cool off a bit, and then we're going to add it to our carboy and so I'm going to continue to stir this while I'm letting that cool off and stirring it and then I'm going to add that to this carboy of Riesling and I'm going to continue to stir for about another 15 minutes or so get all the bubbles out I'm going to add that sparkle to it and um, we're going to be Putting the top back on and letting that sit for about 10 days. Okay, at this point, you don't have to worry so much about topping up this carboy. You know, a lot of people say top up the carboy. Now, when we're done with the clearing <clears throat> and we're racking out of this carboy, I would rack into a five gallon carboy if I wasn't bottling right away, if I wanted the bulk age. And the reason for that is. Um, when you want to store it in bulk age for a while, then you really want to be concerned about the air in the carboy. But at this point, I'm not worried about it. I know a lot of people say that they are, but I've never, ever, ever had a problem. So, if you make sure you clean and sanitize everything really well, like I do, um, you should not have a problem at this point. Bulk aging, you'd want to top up. Alright, so I'm going to stir this around a little bit and let the sparkaloid cool off a little bit. Alright, so at this point I've transferred the sparkaloid to this um, cup that has a lip that makes it easier to pour in. I'm going to pour that in to my carboy. Stir it up. Now at this point you can start singing to yourself. Stir it up, little darling. Stir it up. Put a little reggae in it. Stir it up, little darling. Got a little steel drums playing in the background. Alright. So at this point all I'm gonna do now is sanitize my stopper, my uh, bung and, and uh, airlock, put it on, let it sit for about 10 days. Alright, so now I've sanitized the bung and airlock. What I usually do is I take a Ziploc and I put all of the things that come in the wine kit in the Ziploc and put it on top of the carboy. And uh, so this way the stuff stays with the wine all the time that comes with the kit. So at this point I'm going to let this sit for 10 days and let it go. Then I'm going to be racking or bottling at that point. I haven't yet decided what I want to do. Um, I'm also going to be back sweetening. This is the whole purpose I made this kit is to show you all how to back sweeten some wine after you make it. Um, this is a Riesling wine and I kind of like Riesling, Riesling a little bit uh, 
a little bit on the sweet side, not completely dry. Um, okay, yeah, that's it. So this is going to sit for 10 days, and um, if it sits longer, then that's cool too. It doesn't matter. Um, but um, at this point, I'm going to let that clear and decide what I'm going to do after that, whether I'm going to bottle or bulk age. Alright, hope you've enjoyed watching these videos and I hope they've been really helpful for you. I have a few really great winemaking projects coming up very soon, um, so stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of exciting things. i got a port I'm going to be showing you, how to make a port. Um, and I'm going to be doing something else with a low-end kit and a high-end kit at the same time. I'm going to be showing you that as well. Alright, stay tuned for the next part. It should be coming in about, I don't know, you'll probably get a video in about two weeks. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my video channel here on YouTube. And check out my blog at www.cooking-italian-recipes.com for great Italian recipes, tips on organic gardening, winemaking, and uh, herbalism, and all other kind of fun stuff that I'm into. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Take care.